Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and today we're gonna be doing part two of the ITB install. So where we left off is we got the ITBs on and the old intake manifold off and we took apart the inside of the car so that we could take the heater core out and um, now that that's out we have room to put the Piper Cross filter and um, that's pretty much what we did last video. Now we're going to be installing the brand new harness that I just got a couple days ago over here. It's got a lot of fuses, um, a firewall disconnect, so it'll be easier if I'm taking out the engine. And we got a fan relay harness, and um, yeah, just a bunch of different plugs. <laughs> Pretty much what a harness is. And then, first things off, we didn't film this, but we, I got a audio, no, I got a light mount bracket, L bracket, uh, that I found online, and it almost fit perfect for this vacuum block. So now we have the vacuum block installed on the side of the engine. So that's a great place it's gonna be hidden when we have the ITBs right here. And now we're gonna be installing the oil pressure sender. This is supposed to be for a Honda, but the threads are the same, so it will work. So Dan is gonna be putting on the harness right now. I finally got the um, oil pressure sender all done. It's a whole ass like stick this has got a Bosch sensor it's got the OEM one so this is for the electronic this is for the manual and then we got the adapter plugs blocked off so um, that's done now he's gonna be working on getting the harness So for the inside, I've got everything hooked up. The monsoon link hooked up, all the um, relays are hooked up, the fuses are already there. We got the big black plug now. The last version of the wiring harness is missing that, so we got that now. Um, the last thing that needs to be done is these wires right here. So this one goes to the fuel pump. All three of these go to the direct battery, or in our new case, I think the alternator. And then we've got a ground and a ignition switch right here. So this should be pretty easy. And then once this happens, um, Dan is going to just get it like rudimentary set up going. And then we're going to try to start it and see if it'll actually run. Alrighty guys, so we got done with almost, I think 75% of installing the wiring harness. We still got a couple things, but we want to see if it gets running first um, before we do any more. Um, Wiring harness is almost fully plugged in. There's a couple plugs over here, a couple plugs over here. Um, we don't have the transmission in either because we're waiting on the new clutch to come in. Exetti has them back ordered and it's been already like a month, so hopefully it gets done soon. Got the inside wired in and right now, Dan is trying to uh, plug it up to the computer and see if we can get it running. What's the problem? Um. Looks like you think there's a problem. So we thought we had a big problem here, but the only problem was I forgot to connect the firewall disconnect. So now that that's on, the ECU is connected. And... Beautiful base map we got here with all the same values. Showing, yes. that it, showing this is your fuel map. This shouldn't look like this. And I'll show you. Here's the difference. Um, I'm getting a tuning lesson, even though I don't really know how to tune. So here's his map that he got from his weird wiring man in Malaysia. Uh -huh. I'll show you what mine looks like. This is a very ruder interview one from my 800 horsepower 4A GE. Here's what, um, disconnect the ECU. Here's what mine looks like. You can obviously see there's a different values in the table and then it corresponds to different tables on the 3D graph of the fuel setup. So as this gets higher, this is your TPS. As it gets higher, you're stepping on it. <laughs> and then when it's lower, this is your idle and your fuel mixtures and how much idle um, injector duty you should have. And now we're back down. Yes, sir. All right, let's try to start it. There you go. All right, go for it. Nice. So, 
What did we do? We put the trans back in. Yeah, uh, we figured out that there was a powered cable that wasn't hooked up to the battery. So we hooked that up now and we are all good to go. So hopefully it will crank now and then tomorrow we're gonna finish it up and then it should be ready to get tuned. Yeah. All right, ready? Alrighty guys, so today is gonna to be day three, I think, of working on this car, uh, and part two of the video, still. Uh, I'm gonna show you guys what I've done throughout the week, just little things uh, that I didn't put in the video because I just came out here for five minutes and started tinkering with it. But I had to get this fitting right here. This is the M8 by a 1.0 to a 3AN uh, adapter fitting. And this is extremely hard to find in the US. You had, I had to import it from the UK and uh, it was like 30 bucks, but it fits. I don't have to drill, I don't have to tap anything like that. So that works, that's good. Um, the reason why I needed that was because this um, bracket for the throttle cable uh, kind of interferes with anything big being here. So I have to relocate it. And by relocating it, I mean getting this long ass hose so that I can relocate the adapter anywhere that I please and plug it up to the connector down there. Today what we're gonna do is we're gonna finish installing the transmission, uh, make sure everything's hooked up, um, make sure there's no fuel leaks uh, with the new fitting uh, because even though I put Teflon tape plus a bonded seal that I got off Amazon, so it's extra uh, secure, should be no fuel shooting through. Um, and maybe even start it up, but who knows. The only thing I'm missing that's left for this build is the adapter for the two bolt to one bolt uh, O2 sensor. And that should be coming in sometime during the week. So once that's in, um, I can set up an appointment to get it tuned and uh, finally get this baby running after a year and a half of it sitting. So I'm gonna install the relocation for the fuel sensor and um, cut some vacuum hoses real quick so that it fits the vacuum block all the way down there. All right, so then now that every fuel line is connected, we're going to try to start it up, or not start it up, but turn on the fuel pump and see if there's any leaks with all of these uh, miscellaneous eBay parts that we got. Ready? I'm ready. Stop, 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 stop. All right, test three. Right, ready? Yep. Ah, stop. I sleep done. Dude, look, it like, it like, this time it like squirted right at me. Shake four. Three, two, two, one. Stop. Test five. Three, two, one. Okay. Okay, it's working. Fuel pressure's 50. So since we got this uh, figured out, no more leaks with this, we're gonna go get food real quick. We're gonna go buy another battery because this one's dead for the MR2. So we've been sharing the battery for this. And then uh, we should be able to crank it up and all the fuel residue will hopefully be gone so we don't start a fire and burn down all the progress we made in the last like two months. And we sorted out mostly all of the wires. The only thing that's blocking this from opening up fully is the um, fuel line, but that's gonna be replaced soon, so we don't really need to worry about that. So now what we're gonna do, try to start it up for like 30 seconds. If it starts up, then we can start putting things back together, making sure there's no vacuum leaks, putting the stacks on, putting the... No vacuum leaks. No vacuum leaks? Hopefully not, or what? Doesn't matter. Okay, okay, if there, even if there is vacuum leaks, forget those. We'll put everything back together, put the transmission uh, fully back in, and then it'll be fully ready to get tuned. And then uh, next week, yeah, you'll see a video of it ripping down the road. Good news is, is with the stacks and the filter, it's gonna cover up all of this mess. So we're not gonna have to see that, even though that I know it's there. What was that? <laughs> Timing. Basically, right now, I'm gonna retune the throttle and we're gonna fix that fuel line so it doesn't hit it so we can actually rev it up. We're gonna fill, up with a, fill it up with coolant and then we're also gonna connect the drive shaft so we can get the wheels turning. And fill it up with a transition fluid as well. Yeah. Alrighty guys, so we're gonna start it up again. 
we've got the fuel line, the new fuel line in uh, from Flows Racing. We've got all of the things out the way from the throttle cable, so everything will open up nicely. And uh, we're gonna try to start it and see, you know, what happens. Fingers crossed. Three, two, one. Hold on, there's sparks. Where? Um, on the alternator. So, uh, we lost all power because... No power. No power still? Here, go, go, go metal with it for like a second. Okay, so... Oh, yeah, yeah, that's why. Okay, hold so on. So the fuse blew. We're connecting a wire just because we don't have another fuse. Dan's gotta leave soon. And uh, we're trying to get this started up just to see it running for the first time and catch it on video. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to leave a like and comment and subscribe down below um, if you guys want to see the next video of this baby actually getting tuned. Um, if you're doing a setup like this and have any questions about anything, feel free to reach out. I'm not the best with this, but I'm learning as I go and um, definitely learn a lot of stuff about ITPs in the process of me and Dan actually doing it. But um, it seems to be running good. No sparks, no fuel um, is leaking, so that's really good. Only thing that needs to be done now is getting it tuned and I hope that's the easy part so I can be driving this around for Radwood. It's April 2nd today and on the 23rd is Radwood and I'm trying to bring it there. If not, I'll just bring the Forerunner, but of course I feel like this would get a lot more attention and uh, it'd be a nice accomplishment to have this at Radwood after a year and a half of it not running. So peace out guys.